There we go. This is live. Um, with us today, there's uh, Lauren Moore Nignon. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, Greg Castle hasn't joined yet. He might be joining us soon. Then there's Dimitri Sokolov, uh, Stefan Kreutzer, and me, John Kelvin. And this is basically a digital conversation around dynamic knowledge repositories and, and related things. And me, I'm John Kelden, and I'm doing something called the Conversation Community, a community that is kind of inside Facebook, but it's not Facebook. So uh, it was very short about me, and you others can have a go at just shortly introducing yourself. Ah, oh, we have Greg Castle. Hi, Greg. Welcome. Hello. Hi, Dale. Hi. Oh, yay. So, hey, Greg. Um, uh, should Lauren, should you do an intro of yourself? Oh, okay. So, uh, my name is Lauren. I'm kind of a network weaver. I, I'm usually in Europe, but I just moved to uh, Florida. And, um, I'm interested in conversations, and what I'm even more interested in is um, forming um, in real life, in person salons, which are then kind of connected to these conversations, kind of salons connecting to each other through um, uh, kind of digital network weavers and conversations. So I'm kind of interested in um, discussing seeing things in focus groups and then spreading that information somehow like mycelium uh, kind of in an underground way spreading this collective intelligence so great Stefan should you jump in yeah, I can uh, my name is Stefan Kreutzer but like in the English speaking world you are allowed to say uh, Stephen or Stefan Kreutzer right but uh, what I do uh, by my kind of uh, personal interest is uh, hypertext systems text in 2019 isn't uh, that fancy anymore uh, different sort of web only for text uh, basically and documents not so much applications and rather small tools uh, that's what I do on my own because it's really hard to find people who are interested in this kind of thing and um, what I what I started to do um, because of that is to look more into groupware things to because there are plenty of people who try to have you know their uh, difficult complex problems in the world and plenty of people who claim that they want to work on that and then they claim that there's a lack of tools so I try to engage with them to so we can find out um, how like um, how the things actually are and what I'm also kind of observing is uh, online video and looking into big amount of small sites. And I would also want to have a hypermedia system that does some things around that could also be audio. And what I don't find any time to work on would be augmented reality and a cheap version of that, which is for you know the smartphone and the glasses and no cameras on the Google Glass and stuff like that with geolocalization and QR codes and public infrastructure so that this doesn't get a new thing by a big company that has control over what you can and cannot see and do also in combination with the Internet of Things so that you could give commands to the real world and it would do something and stuff like that. But that's only like putting a few things out there, which would be my kind of main interests. So mm, great. great. Uh, Greg? Hi, thank you. Hi. Uh, I resonate a lot with what Stefan said, actually. There's a lot of similarities there. Uh, also, I know with Dimitri as well. Um, my intro is a little different, I guess, though. Uh, I'm, I'm Buddhist, I'm pagan, and I'm an artist, and I just got into all this peer-to-peer -peer oh. systems design in the last uh, four years or so. Um, as it so happened, because I'm a trained designer and a philosopher of language, but when I got into activist groups, volunteer run groups, I had all kinds of horrible experiences. And um, because I've been Buddhist for a long time, 
it was really easy for me to see that uh, the people that behaved badly in certain contexts were not solely responsible for their bad behavior. Rather, it was a systemic problem. They were in, operating in uh, warped operating systems and warped digital networks, including Facebook, for instance. So, and I also recognize clearly that all digital networking technology includes a lot of arbitrary technical assumptions. So I personally start as simply as possible from ground zero um, with as few assumptions as possible about how the mind works, how language works, et cetera, trying to build new language and tech potentials, which seem clearly possible to me and worth trying. Um, and I want to emphasize, I am uh, very concerned with the automatic side of digital networking, the hardware and the software, but I really focus on human to human protocols for interaction and uh, how we build organizations, et cetera. That's what's really foundational to me. So um, great, great. thank you all for being here. Yeah. And Dimitri? Hello. Um, so my name is Dimitri Sokolov. And uh, my primary interest uh, is uh, development of uh, long-term organizational memory. I'm also looking how self-organizing uh, teams are being built and developed. Uh, I have a platform of uh, this kind of memory online. It's uh, just a prototype on uh, basically uh, in two environments. It's uh, kind of a wiki, uh, PBWorks. And uh, also uh, David Graf, uh, it's a um, mind map um, tool online as well. And so uh, those two environments are interconnected. So you can uh, see interconnected information in both uh, textual and uh, visual formats. And also I'm looking uh, into a possibility of uh, building uh, a cognitive assistant, which is a multimodal virtual assistant where uh, uh, all the information will be delivered, which is required uh, for work and uh, collaboration between different people. So, and so, uh, yeah, and working with uh, quite a lot of people, uh, especially with Greg for quite a time. And thank you very much for being online all together now. Mm. Cheers. There's some really strong resonances in, in uh, a conscious approach towards uh, language and how that, that can help improve quite a lot of things. Uh, Lauren, you had in the chat, we shared among several of us leading up to this video, uh, some really good thoughts and uh, a question, I think. So maybe you should start us off with, and then we can just, just go into conversation and, and around that, if you would uh, okay. share with us. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll just kind of explain what uh, everyone is working on, just in case people don't know what anyone is talking about. Because um, it's, it's kind of vague and abstract. Um, to achieve some sort of innovation. Um, certain people think of this as like a light bulb, like just these great ideas. People just have these great ideas. But actually, um, wiser people are um, putting forth a notion that it's actually not a light bulb, that innovation is more like Lego pieces. And it's the little prongs on one end and the holes on the other end that make Legos stick together. And if you have a bunch of Legos, then people can have an explosion of innovation while they can just create whatever they want to create. And basically, all the people here are working on taking knowledge or language and figuring out how to turn it into Legos, pieces that can go together and that you can build things with so that it's like a basis for a really profound innovation in um, knowledge sharing intelligence. So um, we were talking on the chat about how in the world of tradable goods, 
the, the market is the mechanism that connects the buyers and the sellers. And it, it, it works great. It's a very, very good mechanism to connect buyers and sellers. But outside of the market, um, there is there's a problem that there's not a connective force. There's not, um, first of all, the, the things, they aren't like Legos. They're like, some are Legos and magnet tiles and nothing's quite coming together right. So five different organizations might have in, entirely the same views and be working on the same thing and they'll never find each other because they're not using the same language. So what we're trying to figure out is how to connect all of these organizations, these apps, these businesses, the money that's trying to find these businesses, and what do we call this mechanism? Because one of the problems is it's a problem with no name that people can identify as a problem. And as long as it has no name, it's not really being talked about directly. So that's just an inter introduction. No, it, this is a, a wonderful opening. I mean, this is to just emphasize again, this kind of a free for all and sort of feel free to just riff further and, and, and respond and think further and develop further and which kind of emergent line of inquiry we, which we happen to find. Right? I mean, I'm just going to make a very short reflection that I just have to really like Lego. I inherited tons of Lego from my older siblings and I've been sort of playing Lego for 50 years now. It's almost embarrassing to admit, but I've done that. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, feel, feel free, anyone who's chime in. Uh, I just want to say that I think Lego is a very powerful term. Everybody knows what it means. And for me, so there, therefore, it serves as a great uh, analog or metaphor for what I would call modular design in general. And modularity is really, to me, the key to all sustainable and scalable design that, that operates very fairly and inclusively in any uh, community of any size, ultimately. Oh, and also, uh, Lauren, um, Lauren, you talked about uh, connecting people that are working on different things, and maybe they don't realize how much uh, unnecessary redundancy there is. Um, I think one of the ways that we're going to connect, and this is one of my later arguments, I guess, too, is is by creating other marketplaces. I mean, working to supplant the existing marketplaces with community owned and community supported marketplaces that hold certain ethical and technical standards. Um, it's not all about marketplaces. It's also about discussion forums and meetings like this, et cetera. It's about inclusive dialogue. But uh, it's also about matching offers and uh, requests in every uh, social venue. And um, uh, talking about marketplaces, we can, uh, uh, well, I should probably mention here my primary focus, which is uh, global sustainability. Uh, the sustainability itself uh, is a property of uh, endurance uh, and continuity of, uh, in my case, global processes. And so uh, how, the question is how we provide this continuity in the future. Uh, and so also it's known that uh, sustainability can be thought of uh, consisting of uh, three domains. It's just one of the models, but uh, three domains, which is economy, ecology, and uh, uh, social life. And so uh, the question is so, um, about the processes in all these three domains, which are interweaving uh, between each other. We see that uh, processes are more or less uh, self-regulating uh, in economy uh, as a market, but uh, probably in other um, domains, uh, uh, ecological and social, they are not as uh, visible and uh, uh, self-governing. So, so the question is, so why it is happening? And so how to maybe uh, uh, expand experience we have in economic system on a broader on a broader scale, let's say. 
uh, in, in a broader field. Yes, and also I would probably just uh, put here another concept uh, of a, a subject, just uh, uh, probably uh, the organizations uh, may have uh, different levels of uh, development, of organizing itself. And so uh, we know that uh, probably the best uh, uh, organization is a human body with uh, mind and uh, soul and uh, uh, a few other uh, components. And we also know that uh, uh, the subjects can be not just individual, they can be collective. And we have huge example of uh, collective subjects. Uh, it's uh, uh, businesses, teams, uh, different kind of working groups. Yeah, so the, the phenomenon itself is uh, known. And uh, also we can think about uh, global processes as uh, interaction of this collective and individual subjects when uh, they influence each other. And uh, yeah, so we can uh, imagine then that uh, if you want to organize all uh, the processes in all those three domains, uh, we may need to uh, uh, come to a, a model and understanding of a global subject. Yeah, so and to uh, think that uh, if you want to have a change in a global scale and predictable change, those uh, uh, subjects, collective and individual, and the processes uh, have to be organized. And so uh, the highest degree of organization which is proposed is a global subject. Or Stefan, would you like to chime in? Oh, I, I don't know how. I mean, like, I, I have some kind of... I, I try to study um, a, a several um, great uh, heroes of mine, <laughs> who, like, for example, uh, Douglas Engelbart and uh, Ted Nelson and, you know, like, uh, David Galanta and there, there's a, like, whole range of people who had something interesting to say about these things and try to um, pick some methods and approaches from them. And, and also I'm kind of uh, a systemic thinker, but not by training, more from software development, like the, the uh, mention of the modular design or modularity, I, I guess like the our, our main tool for kind of dealing with complexity and all those big problems and lack of, you know, understanding. Um, I, like usually what we do for now is uh, working with abstraction. So things become from the outside a little bit more easier, more manageable. And then the question is, how can you drill into the details that are, you know, which are the real problem, which cannot be easily addressed. And like some things like that, that, which are also sort of like mental tools. Like, I, I, I mean, maybe there's a field already, which is kind of uh, applied system theory or something like this. I, my, my idea, my, my, like, if I understand correctly, I think cybernetics were an um, attempt to arrive at such a thing, but then like, from what I've seen it, always looks like you cannot identify signal metrics that are kind of the, uh, um, which are like a universal model. You can never find one of these. So you need a, rather a toolbox of Lego pieces and tools <laughs> that hopefully somehow can kind of interact and interoperate. And, and from that, I try to do or, or I would be most interested in doing my things um, uh, in, in data or as data, which means that I don't like, I mean, I don't, I don't have the time to build a really big tool, but I would rather have the data that kind of describes what it is and then have small agents, clients, tools, uh, virtual assistants, or however you want to call that, that do reasonable things with the different sources they encounter. And there are problems with that. I know about them. For example, maybe it's not fast, <laughs> right? Maybe you need to you need more glue in between. Maybe the maybe there's no nice interface in in early stages. Yeah, I mean there's of course a cost to that, but I think that's at least an approach 
how I can pick a, like a, a limited task and try to prototype a little bit, find out what is actually needed, what works, what doesn't need, and just throw more stuff onto the pile. <laughs> That's kind of... Yeah, for some strange reason, I saw suddenly uh, Lego bits that learn, right, when we when we use them. Uh, I'm not sure that is kind of... I mean, or, or let's say... Works, but yeah. I, I, I can sort of see weird images for me in my mind from, from all eyes of them. And, and, and it's really nice to me that we are kind of looking at these things from our own unique individual perspectives, which I think is one of those really profound sources of innovation and, and, and co-creation of value, that we are actually doing that. Right? Then obviously that creates an enormous challenge if we could ever figure out a way to actually have sort of a common set of Lego pieces. And I mean common just both in accessible and also in a deeper sense that kind of Maybe if we, the, let's say the five of us would sort of create amazing Lego pieces and those Lego pieces can sort of evolve over time and, and, and as we interact with them. We could call them digital artifacts instead if that sort of would make more sense. Uh, and then the question is if this is really good, what we sort of co-create, then and sort of the implied question is shouldn't others get access to that in both kind of in the business sense, if you want to monetize this, right, but also in a more social and a deeper, possibly in a response to needs for mindfulness, needs needs for ecology, because God knows there's things happening right now. Bolsonaro in Brazil who wants to cut down half of the Amazons and then so there's there's urgent need for some very specialized um, Lego pieces. And shared understanding you know, across the planet is kind of one of those sets that I'm kind of working on myself. And it's um, it's challenging to say the least, right? Because there's 200 languages existing, large ones, and there's as many cultures, and there's many... Um, if I say this Lego piece is red, and I'm absolutely convinced it is red, and no one else sees it as red, and then kind of... And that's just one small piece, and then so on and so forth, right? Um, but uh, if we stick with the Lego thing, um, could we venture forth that? I mean, you mentioned Engelbart. Let's see if we can sort of weave him in. See if I mix up my old stogies here, but I think Engelbart coined the expression of, of um, dynamic knowledge repositories. Was that Engelbart? Yeah, yeah. So maybe we could weave in some of that as well, kind of expanding the, the Lego thing into uh, complex artifacts. Can I? Can I ask a question? I just want to clarify this because this is really like abstract, and I'm having trouble. If we had, let's just forget about like the whole world making decisions. If we had a network that had amazing um, digital knowledge, what are specific things that we could do that we can't do now? What are some specific visions that we could accomplish? Great question. Well, um, I may probably step in uh, at this point. Just um, uh, we can uh, consider, uh, first of all, ourselves here is an uh, emerging uh, collective subject. Yeah, and uh, then uh, uh, realize that uh, this subject, subject uh, is uh, basically an entity, a person uh, who has um, a vision and purpose and intent and uh, capable of realizing this intent. It's not just a being, uh, it's a being who is focused on action and result. So we may think of ourselves as uh, this uh, emerging team, uh, collective uh, subject, and then agree upon uh, what is our goal, and then uh, our thoughts and actions will be defined by this goal. All right. And uh, I would probably still uh, connect, uh, try to connect everything with uh, this uh, uh, global uh, subject and global sustainability uh, problem. So what happens uh, in a subject that uh, he has a mind and feelings uh, who define uh, the purpose and goals and intents. And so uh, we also can think about uh, these pieces of uh, Lego as uh, uh, chunks of knowledge or individual associations. 
associations uh, uh, then uh, are connected to the resources, people, thoughts, ideas, just uh, nearly everything is, uh, uh, can be represented as, uh, as uh, uh, associations, as uh, Lego pieces. And then what we do ourselves uh, is uh, building uh, the network out from these uh, associations, building uh, models, something really big, patterns, as John said before, language, uh, which uh, helps us uh, to communicate uh, these uh, associative networks. And when people start talking to each other, what they do, uh, they're trying to synchronize in time and space. Uh, they synchronize not only content, not only associations, but also how these associations are interconnected in our minds. And when uh, these models are synchronized between the participants of a, a collective, we are coming uh, uh, to a kind of uh, uh, a bigger unified uh, uh, associative network of a collective subject. That's how we uh, build this model and pattern and language for the collective subject. That's how the collective subject is formed. So I would probably uh, uh, try to think uh, in uh, these terms, in this kind of model. But I'm, I'm looking for what I, I still don't understand. What does that mean specifically? Like, what is something that I can understand that we can do with these digital knowledge repositories? Well, this is digital, too complex. Uh, just the digital, sorry for interrupting, Greg. Uh, it's, uh, to me, it looks like um, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a part of a uh, uh, global subject. It's, uh, it can be thought as a mind. Yeah, we are, and in our mind, we know that we are building uh, these uh, connections between associations. And uh, knowledge is also not just information, but also personal experience which is associated with this. And so uh, this experience is changing. It is defined by the context and uh, means that uh, if, if you want to communicate efficiently, we need to have uh, even asynchronous uh, access uh, to all the associations online. That's how it, it becomes uh, dynamic. Uh, oh, dynamic knowledge repository, which is online in our case, because still we are not able to uh, directly access uh, our uh, individual memories. So we, we have to build it online to, to have our common access. Thank you. Uh, can, I, like can I just say something? It, okay, so what I get from this, I'm trying to make it really easy. Tell me, Dimitri, if I'm right or not. Building this mind gives us some kind of um, memory as a network where we have a of, say, for example, dumb decisions that we've taken in the past that we won't make again because we have some sort of institutional memory so we keep on don't we don't keep on making the same mistakes is that something that you're talking about or am i not oh it's a uh, maybe maybe poor connection sorry lauren uh i, I missed a bit but uh, memory to me it's not just a repository it's a it's a process of establishing links between associations, between people, just everything. And uh, uh, just uh, they, in, in cognitive sciences, uh, they say that 80, 90% of cognition is uh, uh, defined by memory. This is communication but and collective What thinking. does that mean when we had the links? Links lead to what? Links, it means that when you have a, a, a associations in your head, then you quickly find uh, this uh, missing uh, piece of puzzle you want to deal with. So you, you get direct access uh, to this puzzle in seconds. You see uh, uh, its uh, current situation, what is happening, who uh, in the group uh, uh, has what kind of opinion, which is relevant to this uh, piece of puzzle. You also see uh, this piece is interconnected with other 
relevant puzzles. So you can zoom in in details and you can zoom out to see a bigger picture. And so the scale, if when it is, so this all is developed, uh, the scale uh, is unlimited. Yeah, and uh, even a small group of people can build uh, ontology. It's uh, ontology taxonomies. Uh, it's uh, the way how this uh, knowledge can be represented uh, is a kind of a, a tree of knowledge. So again, you can have uh, details or you can see the bigger picture like, like a tree. And also because it's a network, the interconnections are uh, kind of free. A anything can be connected with anything. I have a suggestion and for kind of an, uh, what, what we could actually try using some of Dimitri's tools and also bringing all our uh, abilities to, to, to bring to bear on it. Let's say we invent, uh, I'm not sure if it's new, I uh, probably have heard it somewhere, group genius, right? So group genius would then be us adding our own individual Lego pieces around the concept of group genius. Then we add it inside an, an, a digital knowledge repository. And then we keep adding our own personal associations to it, what it means to us. And also, and this is, I think, might be an important point because it talks back to what you said uh, about Lego that could uh, enable innovation. So if we then have, let's imagine we have this group genius and it's kind of a super organism of the five of us, but sort of whatever digital representation we can have, uh, that might enable us to do something that we couldn't have done just within our own individual ken, our own individual knowledge, which means that we have actually now sort of enacted not just a really great, cool concept, but we have innovated something and, and others can then access this kind of they can access this sort of five person super organism uh, and i suggest in five because it's sort of doable right it's not too complex but um what i've been doing as sort of under the hood related to these things are kind of large finite pattern languages which means that if there were patterns of interaction patterns of play patterns of connecting the dots patterns of forming group units and then we could tease them out. Then others could translate that into different domains. I, I can give another example. Let's say I had dabbled in mindfulness, but I happen to know now after a short while of meeting with Greg that he's probably 10 times better at mindfulness than I will ever be. Right? That could sort of be just one of the dimensions where people could then derive practical value out of this um, Repository, right? So the, the, there's these asymmetries, these differences could in itself provide sources of innovation. And if you do a really granular, modular enough pattern language, you could see kind of structural holes, kind of, hey, here's a, here's a Lego piece miss, missing. I happen to sort of have studied that, and I could sort of add that and suggest that in a conversational um, interface that is related to that repository, and then it gets accepted, like you're doing a proposal inside a, a blockchain or ledger or similar. And then there's another thing that I have really learned about, and that is what I would like to ask Stefan. Um, could there be groupware hypertext that would facilitate this? I mean, the, the, the devil is in the detail. It's one of those famous expressions, right? That if I have this weird color lego and i haven't got a first clue what to do with it is there a possible way to sort of put that in sort of provisional space and then you have a go at it so at least others can ah it's a blue green thing right so providing some kind of language glue if that's kind of not too awkward metaphor right yeah uh, we hear from greg yeah. i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you but greg might have to go at 12 40. So I just want to make sure that I that we yeah, yeah sure, um, sure. Let's, get some. Yeah. I mean, this was kind of direct uh, to, to Greg as well. So yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let's do a time check. I can definitely stay until at least for another ten minutes or so. How is everybody else? Good. Um, I I imagine we won't get that far in that time, but 
I'm good for 10 minutes. So uh, with that in mind, Stefan, if you would like to reply to John, that'd be great. And I will chime in for sure. Uh, I mean, uh, okay, uh, uh, really quick, the, um, uh, like, I mean, the, the reason why I'm uh, remotely interested in groupware is because it, uh, some of the mechanisms uh, uh, and, and like the engine and, you know, like, like, uh, the, the, like um, a Lego block <laughs> component, componentization and modularity, uh, uh, I hope or think or assume that there's a relation with the hypertext stuff because um, like if it's not media um, or like even if it is media, but I mean it's not uh, pure data for calculation and for some of the, I mean for, for every complex and kind of a challenging and intellectual kind of effort with many people involved. I don't think that, um, like, I mean, we still do that with communication and like mental models in the mind and we have to kind of communicate back and forth and arrange them and align them. So I think in some ways there are, there's like, you know, like our language and history and culture, all of that will in some way be in there. If it's text or not, but, but like, I mean, it's that kind of, I mean, it still requires people to read this stuff or listen to it or whatever it is. And, and so, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm, I don't believe in uh, artificial intelligence and reasoning to, to the extent that you can come up with a model that would kind of, you know, like you formalize it in the, and then you have some, some software that could come up with answers because, uh, all of what people do and care about and think that's totally different than what the machine feels and thinks and cares about. And like, there's a lot of history and uh, like, like also the, the personal part in, in, in the knowledge, which is kind of like, I mean, you really understand it if you ha uh, kind of had some experiences with it and that's needs to be encoded somehow. And that's like humans do it, but like the, the tools as a supporting function for this kind of thing. So, so I'm, so, so there's some relation on, on that level, right? I, I could go on, but now it's for, for Greg. <laughs> Great. Mm, thank you, Stefan. Um, so Lauren, you asked originally, what would we be, we be able to do that we can't do now? Right. And I think we've gotten some insights in that certainly. Um, and John, you raised the concept of the group genius, which is, Pretty cool, I think, because one of my short, one of the short answers I can give you, Lauren, is that um, by creating a better, more dynamic repository of knowledge or improved digital networking or improved media directories, however we want to look at it, there's a lot of different ways to improve the networking. Um, we can definitely reduce collective stupidity a great deal and collective harm a great deal. And we can also start to increase our collective intelligence and I think we have to, um, and part of the issue here is that collective intelligence can definitely be greater than individual intelligence. Um, we already have the ability to make uh, organizations which are more collectively intelligent than any of their members. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we've done a very good job of it yet. I think there are some basic protocols and practices that we just don't pursue very consistently to develop that potential, but we need to, otherwise our species will cease to exist. Um, the other short answer I would give you is that we can network, we'll be able to network our wants and our needs much more effectively and efficiently peer to peer with each other. And very importantly, uh, eliminate that layer of corporate, multinational corporation extraction from our networking of ideas, discussions and uh, media items because um that they're extracting that profit and um through their general business practices which which that profit fuels they are destroying our ecosystems and destroying our communities you know there's these intrinsic harms and we can start to get rid of that so um and uh stefan was talking about hypertext a bit and i i guess i would like to emphasize that two of my main open source prototypes are called uh, uh, collected media markup language and structured conversation, which are both very generic names. Um, but 
these are ways of using the hypertext metadata, attaching it to media items to create uh, um, to create directories, which you know create this uh, knowledge or this map of how a conversation is functioning and of how uh, different communities um, derive value from specific media items, including just text messages, also including video files, including any imaginable type of media. But, but to generate, um, using this uh, markup language to generate each community's uh, directory of, uh, of digital resources which they rely upon in many capacities and and to network the communities together because all because if you de if you derive the right open source uh, markup language you can create all kinds of uh, distributed directories where the communities are all related to each other very dynamically and evolving shared uh, intelligence between specific communities may be shared between several different communities maybe that becomes global intelligence or global subject as Dimitri would probably phrase it so let me just let me just clarify saying we have a network with the with this collective intelligence with these digital knowledge repositories and all of this that we will reduce friction and redundancy okay so the entire network will be more efficient okay I, and I think why 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 don't we just use big data? What's the difference between what you're talking about and big data? Mm. Well, I'm not sure what big data is in the most generic sense. I mean, right now, the idea of generating big data is a, a tool that specific multinational corporations use, and they create their proprietary databases. You can't see all the information that Google or Facebook has on us, they're using it privately to create their own, you know, profit. Um, so, so I think there's a very harmful process going on there, but they're probably using some tools and techniques which would be helpful to us, but they're doing it in a very centralized way where you're creating, you're taking all the information and putting it into a single global re repository, which is both very complicated and also limited in its efficiency and scalability, I think. Just to say, like the traditional blockchain, like Bitcoin, is limited in its ability to scale, and this is very tangential. But it, there are constraints on how on the energy usage and the uh, the centralized databases, you know. Whereas if you use a much more distributed approach, it can potentially scale uh, infinitely. Honestly, infinitely. It's just that, like, if you end up with millions, billions, or trillions of nodes in a particular network, then you would develop all these different structures which enable them all to network at these different levels and levels upon levels. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's a great example of, of why what you just said, Greg, is so important, not just for us, but sort of planet-wide. And if you look at, for instance, the uh, recent rollout in, in China that you can sort of use to facial recognition of purple, all the Chinese people, right? I sort of have kind of a massive Chinese sort of panopticon that everyone is now sort of turned into. And this is sort of, you know, it's, it's probably human nature. It's too tempting for people with power and power over and sort of exist in kind of old existing hierarchies to, hey, we have big data. Now we can control every citizen in our country. Uh, yes, you can do that, but is that what we should do, use data for? So this, the question of, of the, these digital knowledge repositories, these different systems, hierarchical, big data, or more distributed, it sort of falls back on, um, I, I see language as code. So there's code code and there's language code. Right? And it's, it's as important how we use language mindfully as we are sort of doing, uh, we are mindful with, even though you're, I mean, but this hasn't happened yet. This code is now, we're sort of busy doing the Facebook panopticon or the Chinese panopticon or the surveillance mechanism or the whatnot, right? Um, and probably we would have to sort of begin to talk about these things and with those programmers who are just lending themselves like math mathematical wizards who are doing the Wall Street algorithms, right? And 
Yes, they are wonderful, wonderful algorithms. They work really well, and you can do loads and loads of transactions in Wall Street. But is that what we are actually going to do? Right? So um, this goes back to, uh, I think it was, was it Buckminster the Fuller who said kind of we, we should build things that renders sort of the old obsolete system renders the old no, no longer the optimal systems obsolete right so we should sort of it's also kind of a big thing about this why these knowledge repositories because they will help us bring our best knowledge to bear on exactly these kinds of issues so it's kind of a nice little feedback loop there right um and and also i had an idea with the group genius so it could serve as kind of a practical microcosm it's sort of doable within a limited amount of time for us here. And then we could tell others that, oh, but, but what this big, humongous knowledge repository. Yeah, you do exactly like this one. And it's different ones. And you do exactly the same with the, all the other things. So, and, um, and this goes towards my philosophy underneath, which is kind of, we should sort of have open access or as much open access as possible and distribute value, knowledge, as far out edges towards where it is actually needed. Local communities, local ecosystems, local tribes, local whatnot, right? Groups. So um, there's an interesting quirk with knowledge. Knowledge is kind of, if I share knowledge with you, I still got it, right? There's kind of a neat quality to it, right? So kind of like I have a knowledge Lego, I can sort of share it with you and it just sort of respawns itself. So I still got the, the one I share with you and you got one as well, right? This is a really nice quality. It, it requires lots and lots of knowledge to sort of deal with current models of ec economics because economics, the traditional one, requires scarcity, right? So then I had to sort of come up with this weird notion that I, I can give you one, but I would prefer hoarding it, right? I keep my Lego bits to myself because that makes more economical sense in the old model. So the, these old models need to be rebuilt as well, right? And um, Vinay Gupta said a wonderful thing. We need to take into account that the current institutions and nation states and, and political bodies, they own the present. So we need to sort of be very careful how we negotiate these things and how sort of too much, so we don't sort of get too far into the future because then there will be too much of a tug of war and sort of too much distance in between us. We start to talk these sort of new languages like blockchain and knowledge repositories and, and hypertext and whatnot, right? And meanwhile, the guys in Brussels or New York or London or wherever they are, they are sort of happily sort of hoarding and keeping to the old ways, which we already know doesn't work, but we are not really doing the job of sort of bridging in between. So that's also knowledge, which then eventually I'm seeing that if we can get people in Brussels and New York and inside big institutions to start using these new things, that would probably be a good thing to aim for. But that also requires uh, innovating language, which we are, and it, being mindful when we innovate language. So we don't end up building sort of this new bubble tower once we have sort of toppled the old one. It, it's, it's, I'm kind of a bit of a historian myself. So I can, we, we have done that number of times in history. So it's kind of, what if we didn't, we, what if we did a different thing? So this ties back to societal innovation and back to your original question for kind of the, the innovation thing. Right? I shared two links. So, oh, sorry, Greg, sorry. If you go, you, you, you have priorities. Just um, keep looking. Well, <laughs> I, should, I should leave in a couple of minutes, so maybe I'll try to sign out and then you, you can share. You know, you already po posted the links. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I want to say, first of all, I, I would be willing to follow up in any, you know, combination with you guys and or other people in a future related discussion, because I do think that we've scratched the surface, at least, of some really valuable, uh, um, mutually important subjects here. Um, and Sean, um, I, I would say that nation states and corporations, they, they don't exactly own the present, but we do need to be very mindful that they own massive instruments of uh, coercion and violence and exploitation. And they, and they are very willing to use these 
instruments. They're very practiced at skilled at using these instruments. And so I do agree. Uh, also, I believe in compassionate communication, uh, nonviolent communication generally to begin with. So um, it's pretty easy for me to try to at least, uh, you know, do things in a way where we're uh, exploring adjacent possibilities and designing for everybody, including the people that are currently exploitative, but may or may not be fully conscious of the fact that they are very exploitative. Um, some of them probably are, some of them probably aren't. Um, uh, I want to thank you, uh, uh, Stefan and John, because we haven't talked before. There's a great deal of resonance. I really appreciate that. Likewise, uh, Lauren and Dimitri, um, it's not quite as novel for me with you guys. Um, Dimitri, thank you very much for focusing on the concept of sustainability. Um, and that ties into uh, the question I think you suggested at one point for this meeting, Lauren. Um, how do we get people paid for building such things as dynamic knowledge repositories. And I would like to follow up on that in a later discussion. Um, I'm going to, um, as I sign out here, maybe this isn't fair, but I'm going to <laughs> project a bit. Um, and you all can respond to me uh, through text later on if, if you want to. Um, I'm going to suggest that the challenge of getting people paid to do that, though, to create dynamic knowledge repositories is mostly identical to the challenge of getting people to do any other kind of digital networking technology research development and support because of what john mentioned really that neat quality of, of knowledge um the fact that uh digital resources media resources including software code can be replicated endlessly at minimal practically no marginal cost per unit um so we see since the dawn of the internet we see all these uh in many cases, pre-existing multinational corporations mindfully working to ex exploit and, and uh, extract uh, profits from the developing digital networks because they're relying so heavily upon the concept of intellectual property. And, um, and I'm going to suggest ultimately, and I'll follow up on this in a later meeting, that, that we, uh, we know the enemy, and I don't mean human beings, I mean these institutions and these uh, technical stacks and, and these profit stacks that the multinational corporations depend upon, including IP law and uh, capturing communities like Facebook does and paid advertising and the big data consu consumer um, data analytics, um, including data mining um, and, the, uh, and the commissions that say Amazon, uh, Amazon charges a fee for people doing things through their service of course there's these basic tools that they use to artificially extract profit from something which didn't actually cost them a thing to do even though they are creating some very valuable structures they're intentionally centralizing everything into this layer of, of um, ex money taking dollars out of it that is uh, then publicly traded which is a, and is a heightened form of abuse of the planet the public trading. So anyway, I'm going to suggest that we know the enemy as, as carefully as possible. And I would like to talk more in the future about some of these uh, points I just briefly referred to. And then um, I'm going to suggest to dis displace that by not fighting the enemy, um, not playing the same game that they do at all. Okay. Um, meaning um, uh, building support in ways that are modular and fully distributed, not centralized, of course um and may you rely upon open and transparent processes and actually promote that as being uh an advantage in a higher as our consciousness evolves a bit at a higher sense we can um promote that as an advantage using stuff such as open book accounting um if people are truly willing and able to let people see what's going on in their team in their organization i think it's a huge competitive advantage um, and real community building, because all of these things that are currently dominant, including the US dollar and including the multinational corporations, they're not based on real communities. They're actually, you know, they're based upon trying to treat everybody on earth as, uh, as uh, um, equally interchangeable um, pawns. Um, and uh, real communities are based upon uh, shared interests and uh, developing trust 
person to person and in small teams and in families and in geographically local communities, in conceptually localized communities, people who may be all around the world, but they share a passion and devotion to a very specific concept. So then we have to get better at community governance, of course, and that's actually what I mainly focus upon. So I just rambled quite a lot. Um, no, that was brilliant, really brilliant. Really happy time. that really happy that we have that on, on, on tape or, 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 uh, and the contribution for all of us, right? Mm. So, uh, and mindful of that, we probably need to leave. Uh, so, so big thanks for, for having met you. I mean, this was the first time we, we meet like this, right? So, uh, and onwards with the, 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 with the others, right? If we have a checkout, takeaways, next steps. Uh, well, to I was just was ready to talk um, when I interjected about my departure, so I don't know. If, but do you all need to start signing out now or not? Oh, so, sorry, uh, I missed probably something. Is it, uh, was it for me, Greg? You said something. Oh, I was I was mentioning that you started to refer to the two links that you posted. Uh, when I decided oh, yes. to check out. So I didn't know if, if there was enough time for you to follow up on that briefly before people check out or not. Yeah, just uh, those two links is extract uh, from uh, the like and minds kind of uh, online memory, uh, which, which was relevant to what we've been talking about. Uh, what is uh, to me important is that uh, uh, global subject uh, uh, building principles uh, is uh, inclusiveness and uh, we should not probably uh, uh, call them as uh, the enemies uh, those who are not uh, aligned so very closely with us but probably just uh, uh, some other collective subjects in a bigger picture what is important for us uh, uh, as uh, emerging team is uh, to realize that uh, our conversation is uh, just a kind of a slower thinking mode for us where we bring on the surface very different uh, our personal associations but uh, what happens is that uh, with time these associations are going deep back to back to the blue deep uh, but uh, there is other sort of uh, thinking uh, uh, which is uh, called uh, uh, slow thinking that's where uh, the long-term memories are being built and so that that's where we uh, uh, we we can uh, start uh, working asynchronously, spend our time uh, to align our personal associative networks with the associative network of a collective and modify it in such a way and uh, build something uh, online uh, and uh, to have it accessible not only to all the participants but potentially to the broad audiences to be more inclusive when it's necessary other, uh, otherwise, uh, we can also think about uh, uh, kind of exclusive as well to just to keep our integrity. So we may think about open uh, repositories of knowledge and closed repositories of knowledge. And so that uh, aligns uh, with uh, the systems uh, series as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it, and also what we are doing right now, uh, we brought uh, on the surface uh, those associations which are important to each of us. Uh, at the moment, and we are trying to build uh, these connections between those in our heads at the moment. Yeah, but our uh, collective will emerge when we start building it online. What makes sense to the collective? So collective, we sh should be uh, kind of separated from individuals. Yeah, so we are talking about memories, collective memory in this case, online. In our case, it's online, but uh, I also support uh, Greg that uh, it's a need uh, of uh, doing it peer to peer for a number of reasons. So we are talking about peer to peer collective intelligence. And this is also a field uh, we with Greg are working on. Yeah, thank you. Mm, thank you. Thanks. Good. Uh, I mean, we could go on for a bit, at least a couple of minutes. So, so uh, Lauren and Stefan, you have time for to to uh, check out and suggest next steps as well. Right? I have plenty of time. I didn't plan anything else. So, Stefan, should you do a? Uh, uh, you mean check out for <clears throat> a 
great. Yeah, I mean, you're just kind of like, yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, you gotcha. all can uh, talk, uh, whatever you want to do, obviously. Uh, I, it would be great if I hear a bit from Stefan and Lauren before I sign off. Uh, my, my my checkout, uh, Greg and also uh, John and also Lauren would be um, to please please send me links to your whatever you have resources or like projects or also some key findings if you have like just write like a sentence or whatever kind of um, what what you have learned from your projects in the past and if there are somewhere links or indications or or whatever you have, so I can look into them, because to to some extent, I mean, of of course, for example, uh, John, I know of course your your videos on YouTube, but other than that, like your work in pattern languages, you mentioned that several times. But like I, like I mean, I need some time to look into this stuff. And same with yeah. all the others. And Greg, I missed the second name of your. I mean, the first was the. I have it here somewhere. Okay, yeah, uh, you had the two major projects. Please send me right. whatever. That's my checkout. <laughs> right. We'll send it to you, yeah. Famous last words to you, Lauren? Me? Yep. Um, well, the, the reason I was... Uh, actually on um, trying to um, define clear benefits of the digital knowledge repositories because I, I was a key to getting funding this work to be able to because sometimes these discussions are so high in the sky that it's very hard for normal people to um, understand the importance of this so I think and um, I think anyone could understand these repositories could improve our lives. Um, how they could within a network also make a network, a very, very powerful network, a network that um, could make repositories and um, uh, build on, the on these interconnections between everything. It could be much faster and able to respond to events. Uh, I may say something here. Just uh, what happens that uh, our uh, experiences are mostly personal. Next stage uh, is uh, our participation in the collective. And collectives that we know, uh, they uh, often do not use uh, slow thinking at all. So their, their operations are based on the working memory that's where the ideas are brought on the surface and they are floating. When they sink down, it will be someone's role to bring them back together. So it, it's, a, it's a partially random process. So people uh, keep thinking that uh, the knowledge is uh, sitting in human's head. And if you want to solve a problem, you just need to bring proper uh, people on, on uh, I don't know, on, on, on a team. It works uh, for small teams. But so then this model falls down when we start uh, uh, thinking about uh, hundreds of people working together. I mean, working together as uh, thinkers, um, as uh, the decision makers. Yeah, when uh, everything is structured, uh, like on a factory, where every, uh, everyone's role is uh, uh, strictly uh, written down, then everyone knows what to do at what time. This is not a problem. The problem arises uh, in the knowledge economy when uh, we start uh, aligning and building this overall picture of the world, for example. But what is not uh, uh, being done yet? Because, uh, say, Wikipedia is a very uh, generic uh, media. It does not uh, really uh, provide any uh, information from uh, every locality. Yeah, because uh, in, uh, in, in different locations, we may have very different processes, very different patterns. Uh, all this information is, uh, is just missing. And also what is important is the people uh, sitting on those locations. Those are the people who are collecting proper data, which are relevant to their uh, current situation. And when we start talking about big data, for example, 
it's uh, someone's uh, vision on uh, how uh, this uh, world uh, is imaged in this big data model. So my uh, uh, metaphor is uh, the, the, the cake, which can be cut in a million ways. And so uh, that's us, uh, the, the decision makers who, who hold uh, this knife, <laughs> say, and making this cut where it is needed at every location. So location uh, belongs uh, to uh, a vision of a subject, which can be collective as well. And so every subject is uh, sitting in uh, his location. And so, yeah, so location can be geographical, it's location in time. Yeah, and also uh, we, we start uh, talking about cognitive space maybe at some stage. It's uh, uh, our way even of approaching our world because uh, uh, our language uh, is also defined uh, by our context. By, uh, if, if we address a problem with a kind of wrong language, we have uh, higher chances to fail. So we, we have to find uh, the semantics, uh, the, the way of uh, communicating the proper situation and knowledge to each other. Otherwise, we are not coming to this uh, synchronization to, of ideas and associations. We are not uh, getting uh, the agreement, understanding agreement uh, and trust uh, to solve these problems. Yeah, so I, I put, I believe, uh, these uh, two links uh, which are related to this uh, topic. So, uh, and uh, we are back to the dynamic part of uh, dynamic knowledge repositories. So everything is fluid, dynamic. We, we can uh, make a decision which makes sense uh, right now. We can make plans for the future, but not for too long future, just for the next step. And uh, Stefan can uh, uh, talk, uh, I believe, about uh, agile uh, kind of uh, project management. Yeah, maybe, which may be related to, to my understanding. Yeah, so uh, the, uh, and I'm answering actually uh, the question of uh, Lorraine, uh, why do we need these um, uh, knowledge repositories? Is, uh, it's uh, it's uh, the same as uh, why we need our memory. It's our ability to, uh, to come back, uh, to go back in time and uh, think what worked in the past and then think what can be applicable to my now and to my not too distant future. Yeah, so it's uh, it's all about uh, our presence in this or what moment. About didn't now. work in the past. <laughs> mm. What didn't work in the past, which is also important. Yes, so this is memory, but uh, memory dynamic which is we, we because uh, uh, memory is not uh, like a picture in our mind. Uh, our remembering itself is influenced by our current situation. We are not able to remember the same fact uh, exactly the same way as we, as we used before. Yeah, so everything is dynamic at the end of the day, but we need both. We, we need memory as, um, uh, as a repository, as a memory, and also um, uh, the way how it is uh, connected to our current context. Yeah, and also because uh, we are trying to solve this uh, hugely complex uh, problem uh, uh, globally, we need uh, visibility. Visibility of uh, this knowledge and processes. And uh, that will be not possible without building this uh, uh, repository. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, without it, uh, we will have uh, no big uh, uh, world view. So ontology is basically the world view, of, uh, which is seen from uh, very different points by different people and collectives. Yeah. Yeah. I, maybe this is a good time to, to, to pause. I mean, stopping this broadcast. And, and, and thank you, everyone, for, for your wonderful contributions i'm really looking forward to sort of uh, wait, other things and, and yeah is, is there a reason to stop the recording or broadcast yeah greg is needing to go and i need to go greg. as well and um okay. so but i i'm happy to sort of find another time quite soon where we could continue so there's no risk that this kind of just stops here right? and adding documents and so on
Uh -huh. But um, if it's for the media artifact, maybe uh, stop and start it again. So Greg could hear what we have talked and other people as well, if it is made public or not. I don't know, but like, yeah. yeah I, I, I mean, I understand that you have the format of the 40 minutes or one hour uh, uh, artifact in the end, but I like, yeah. I mean, it's fine. I, I, I don't know or care, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, those are important points, and and and, and I mean, it goes to to how we and this is hopefully this recorded video in itself should also form part of some possible knowledge repository itself. It's a, it's it brings to bear on, on all these things. And it is, this is just practical stuff that we that, that that some of us need to go. And I just happen to be sort of brought with the stop broadcast button here at the end of the screen. So, so uh, I'm really looking forward to continuing this both in async in documents and then in, 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 in another uh, video meeting like this. Uh, I have a suggest simple suggestion before we close, and that's just kind of, maybe we could do for knowledge what Google did with the search box with, innovate, with information. So that could be to your question, Lauren. Can we explain in a very, very simple way the benefit, right? So this could be, a beginning explanation of the benefit that everyone can sort of start to begin to understand. Right? And I don't know if you even can do such kind of thing, text space, to direct it to a knowledge repository. Remains to be seen if we can sort of pull that off. But as a beginning explanation, so we can do for knowledge of what Google did for information. It's kind of simple enough. What makes sense to me, and please tell me if I'm um, if I'm wrong, but I think that what we could do is, so Google is amazing if you know what you want to search for. If you want like a widget, you can find your widget. But when you don't know what you want, Google can never find that for you. And I think what I'm understanding is that this kind of intelligence will anticipate that you don't know you need this, but this is what you need. Like this kind, this 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 group of people is what you need, or this app that you didn't even know existed is what you need, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That is good, good, good closure, generative closure, uh, to be continued. And big thank you to everyone, and uh, you. looking forward to to uh, next steps with you. In any which form, and Lauren, thanks for for you at the heart of this thing, right? You brought us all together. So a big thank you, particularly you for that. And now I'm just going to be.